right. I'd like to call to order the Committee of the Whole meeting for September 13th, 2022 at 5.06 p.m. Tenants roll call. Alder Persons Wolf. Here. Terrence. Here. Hamill. Here. Kapusta. Here. Here. Schrader. Here. Kabuka Kabahaki. Here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Madden. Here. We have a quorum present. Thank you. Statement of public notice. This meeting was noticed in accordance with the public meeting law. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That passes. Approval of the minutes from July 23rd, 2022. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. New business, 2023 capital projects fund budgets, starting with public works. Scott, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. All right. We're going to start with the planning division, uh, page 37 in your books. One moment. Yep. No problem. What are you looking for? Is anyone at this end okay? I think we're set. Okay. We're going to start page 37, uh, planning division, entrance signs with club groups. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at is um, on our entrance to four of our locations at the city, we have uh, various groups on, off the side. Some of them are not even up to date. Um, this was a suggestion brought to me by the mayor that we somehow incorporate um, some of these entrance signs with our groups. We don't know what it's gonna look like. We kind of looked at maybe doing some polls and with banners, um, but this is one of the projects that we are looking to do um, just to kind of enhance the social kind of aspect of the city. So I'm sure you, you guys realize as you pull in, like, say, coming in on Racine Avenue, off buried down in the ditch, half dilapidated and everything, it has all the service organizations with what their logos looked like in 1970, yep. um, <laughs> not what they currently are. Some, are. some of these clubs don't even exist. If we wouldn't do this, I would just say take it down altogether because I think it detracts the way it is right now, but I think we'd get pushed back from these clubs. I think we should recognize them, and I think there's a classy way we can do that and kind of make it look inviting while coming into the community. I have no idea what the cause, we're just kind of putting a place marker in there right now. Um, I'll bring this back to committee the whole once we have designs and let you guys weigh in on that, but I think it's something that we can work on in the next year. Thoughts, questions? Well, just looking at it, 12,500 per sign seems like a lot. I don't know what it is because we don't have, we didn't get any Bids or estimates yet? Is that correct? Is that what you're We saying? don't even have a concept yet. So, yeah. again, hitting the sign and the concept, there, there could be everything, like I said, of like think of doing two flagpoles and then kind of doing banners on the side. And the banners would be nice because then you can take off the banner, adjust them, and need it. A typical banner, and I'm not going to say it, you probably have, it's very minimal cost. It's mostly bucks. maybe the two poles. But we can always give you, provide you plenty of two or three options. But our goal is not to be more than this cost, because otherwise I would not present it to you. If you it, I'm not going to present you a design that's going to be more expensive than what we budgeted for. And you'll, so. pr you'll approve the final price tag on it, but yeah. we, for, for budgeting purposes, we have to put something in and, and this is all on Racine Avenue, all four yeah. signs? Um, no. So right now, the two, yeah, the two on Racine Avenue to start with, and then the two on Janesville. On Janesville. Mm -hmm. And if we take them down, what is, what what's our consequence by taking them down and not replacing push, them? Push back from the groups that Oops. service our community. To me, it seems like more of a want than a need, <laughs> and a little bit of a, an extravagance. Not going to affect your budget. I'll put it in there. Put it until you spend it. So yeah. This, the question is, would it go? be better used someplace else, I guess. You can, uh, why don't you let us do some research and show you what the cost comes to at that point? I would approve this. We're not spending it right. until it comes back to you guys. But I, you know, we gotta put something in here. 
you can improve. You can say at the end when it comes forward, no, I don't want to spend that. But it's easier to do it this way than come forward with a concept once we do our research and then ask you for money outside of the budget and then have to do budget amendments and everything else. And where is this money coming from? Landfill. 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 Hmm. So I think is this it's a, a benefit great for idea that money? we start promoting the great things in the city. We haven't done that for too long. I mean, all, this, it's all these plan. groups and organizations do add a lot to the city, um, and this is the only way that we honor them in public. I and think I, it's good use yeah. of landfill funds. I landfill think landfill. it's an exaggerated number, but that's fine because you got to start something. But the problem with that is that we always say yes to this, and then we get to the final budget, and then nobody wants to take anything out. Well, if you're going to look on things in this capital budget to pull out, I, oh, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't start here. <laughs> other things I'm just saying, but all these little things add up. I mean, you know, they do. It, you know, that's it's, it's a good question to question it. I think uh, I guess we can see what it looks like. Well, the good thing is it would be coming out of landfill money, and that doesn't cost the city anything. There is by doing this the way I'm envisioning it, which I haven't fully gone through, but I'm thinking some kind of structure with like pole banners, which a lot of communities use. You go through New Berlin, they are honoring their police and fire all the way up and down National Avenue and things like that. We can do our service organizations and, and then, you know, there, we can pull out stuff for seasonal stuff. We can pull out stuff for, you know, you know, 2022 safest city of the year, that type of stuff. I mean, we're just promoting ourselves. So when you say pole banner, something like what's on Janesville now? That Similar to that, but I'm thinking more of a mast instead of having, like, the ones on Janesville have a single pole, the one on each side on it. I'm trying to see if there's something where you can have multiples going up and maybe, and just, I don't want to say too much because I may be way off base on here, but one of the things I'm thinking of is, like, the welcome to Muskego sign that's there. Like just past it, have a pole that has this thing higher up in the air that would have like say five on each side or something like that. I'm not sure. How, I'd have to. We got to work through this yet. So it's the next step lighting. Well, uh, that's the good thing about if we do with these banners, it's one light in the ground that goes straight up. So we really have power at these things for the existing signs. Again, all this stuff can be dissected when we have something brought forward, but. I mean, you can always kick it down the road it's and say we don't want for it. Now. You could always say you don't want to do anything with it right now. I just think what we have there right now is ugly. Well, it's good to upgrade once in a while. What was that? I said it's good to upgrade once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Consensus? Yes. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. All right. Moving on. Uh, page 38. So... Um, a couple of people have come and talked to us. Uh, the light pole painting on Janesville Road. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware of it, that it is something's happening to the poles out there. Mm -hmm. um, our best bet, we kind of looked at it. Um, what we would do is over four years, we take about 26 poles down. We know how to take them down. We have to have an electrician. We take them to our DPW yard, DPW yard and then we power powder coat them there and then bring them back. So we worked through a process to try to get it as cheaply as possible. The other thing too is from logistic reasons, we have to break it down. It's not really easy, lots of traffic to take one down, powder, powder coat it and bring it back. The other thing is we are hoping to try to do this once this fall so we can have a, a winter time where it goes through winter and test this out. I don't wanna just do this without not testing it. But we have to give you a cost for it, and um, it's been on Facebook. I think you're all aware that the poles are rusting. Didn't we repaint yes. these poles? Yes. Yes. So that wasn't that long ago. Correct, and it made it and worse. we did the library as well, right? No, library is a separate issue. This is a just the Janesville Road. Probably three years ago, there was an issue with them. We had the manufacturer come back. They hired a person. They did this kind of grinding down and repainted it, I'll be honest with you, it made it worse. Mm -hmm. It actually made it worse. So the manufacturers backed that and paid for that? They paid for the first one, they're done, they're gone. Even if they did it wrong? They're, 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 they're gone, we, we have no more rights with them or anything, so. I just, I, I just knew we did this not that long ago, that's why. Uh, I could have told you, I wasn't around then, but. I knew that wouldn't work. You can't take a metal 
pole that's outside and just spray paint it. It's yeah, either got to be electrostatically or it's got to That's how they send them. Get yeah, paint. powder painted. Yeah. So how many poles we got to do, Scott? What? How many poles do we have to do? Uh, it says 104. Okay. Yeah, well, for your test, you want to do one. Yep. Or one. just one. one just test. one. Okay. You can easily take one down, power, get it up there. I'd love to go, for it to go through a whole winter. Mm -hmm. Kind of see. Sounds good. See how it goes. Mm -hmm. So you guys powder paint yourself? I mean, we have powder paint? No, we wouldn't do it ourselves. We hire someone, but we have to have a, a place to do it. So it's cheaper for us to take it just to our yard oh. and send it to take it somewhere else. And then, they, and then they take it from there? Yeah. Okay, I was wondering how we're going no, to No, no, we are not doing it. We, <laughs> our job is to... You work with an electrician, get it sure. down, we haul it back, we get it to our place and let them do the work. We are trying to keep the cost down as much as we can by doing as much as at our facility. My, my fear is if we don't address this, they rust through and they start falling. Well, eventually it'll get bad, yeah. They, yeah. I guess the moral of the story is next time buy poles that... Buy, don't, don't buy the cheapest thing. Don't buy pole, painted poles. <laughs> Or buy black ones, you can't see the rust on them. <laughs> Consensus? Sure. Yes. Yep. Okay. Next item. Okay, next item, page 39. So this is something that I started and brought to you last year, and now we're here. So our road program, it's $750,000 a year. Um, in the last probably month since we are doing our road program, I have gotten at least five to 10 calls, I've got, I'm sure you have, when is my road going to be done? Um, the cost of roads is going up. Our budget hasn't changed since I've been here now, which is going on five and a half years. In a way to catch up, we would like to do a million dollars every three years to kind of catch up. Um, right now, I have a map showing you the number of two to threes, which are kind of our lowest uh, rated roads. And we still have a lot of them to do. So this is our plan, and what would it do is for next year, we'd be bidding out 1.750,000 or $1.7 million, and that would hopefully get us better bids, more competition um, from contractors. So what, what does it mean when there's uh, weeds growing in the cracks in the road? I'm guessing you're, you, are you serious? I mean, it means there's a crack and there's weeds growing through it, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm guessing we need a lot of roads done, right? Yes. Um, we had $400,000 left last year on the road program. What do we do with that money? We did not have $400,000. Did didn't we come in under budget? On Hillendale Road Reconstruction. So what do we do with that money? I do not know. So sure. that 400000 could have went back into the roads during this current period. Sharon, you want to address that? I mean, we raised taxes and we ended up with four hundred grand extra. Sharon, can you? I don't think it's on either road project that we had. It was at South Bridge. Push out towards you. Kind of, yeah. I, I don't know, but that's a capital project, so I don't know if I can take the capital and go into the road program for operating. That's the only thing, but oh. we did never, I don't know what it went. Yeah, we, we did have another road project or bridge project in the capital expenditure fund, so we transferred that. The money actually was transferred from landfill, um, por a portion of it, and on top of the borrowing, and we transferred it back to the landfill, any excess. So there was, the money's not sitting there. It was either reimbursed to the landfill account or it was expended on another capital road project. The only thing I can think bridge. of is it Old Loomis Road. The bridge. Yeah. Old Loomis Road Bridge, remember? I, yeah. We had a little emergency kind of repair, and it was like, hey, are we going to be safe or not? And we came in and we did it really quick. Mm -hmm. um, that's the length project I can think of that we used it for. Um, and that bridge was kind of falling down. I think I showed you those pictures of the steel. <clears throat> so we did use that to repair that bridge. And I'll run a report for you and send it out to you next week. But typically to answer your greater question, when we come in under budget on any of the items for capital, it could, most of these sources are landfill, so we would just roll it back into the landfill fund and it's reused the next year in capital for whatever the capital items are. So it's not... Um, it's not like we borrowed the money and 
then we're going to use it for it. It just goes back to its initial. Solution. No, I was just bringing it up because if we're adding an extra billion in, we're only adding six hundred thousand in. I mean, we we could have used that money on the roads already that need to be done. And and you know, I get a lot of phone calls and a lot of complaints in my area about roads. And uh, I don't know what the roads are everywhere because I don't go down all the streets. But uh, you have a I, lot I can tell you, there's, you have a couple twos and threes. There's there's some and there's some big roads going through that are going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> you know, you run through like a Kipling or something straight through. You know, that's a long road. That's going to be an expensive venture. So that's why I'm, I'm bringing this and up because that's a that's a lot of money to roll into into a fund when we could maybe could have did major patching or something with that. I I don't know. So I'm to, just bringing it so up. So the other thing is when we do put the road program out there every year. We put the roads that we want to do, we bid them. We also do alternates at a time, hoping that they come in less. And when they come in less, so if our original plan was we thought we could get, say, 10 miles of road and it come, on, come under, we don't just do the 10 miles, we do 12 miles or whatever. So we, we maximize that program every year based on what market conditions are. No, I just wanted to bring it up just yeah. to see what no, we are. Well, and that's why we're here, because we do realize that we're not keeping up with our roads. So we yeah, and I know I've been on Scott's side for years on trying to get this budget increased here, so. Any further questions or comments or, so any comments on the funding source on it? So one of the things we have listed in here, because we just had to put something down, we don't have landfill funds for this because we would deplete them. So it's listed as uh, general obligation borrowing. Um, Sharon and I talked about this, and instead of doing general obligation borrowing, we do have fund balance and other accounts that I would rather if we borrowed from ourselves, we so we would take it out of that, take it from other funds, and then pay it back over a period of time from operating. Essentially, to do our we do our debt service, but be paying ourselves that way we're not paying interest on it. Any objections to that? That's not for this program. That's for this. Yes, year? that would yes, be for this. This year. Oh, the general obligation. Okay, I see that. Okay. The landfill. I, was, I just looked at the landfill. I even I just yeah. carried it down. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But but if there were money that was pushed back in the landfill from any excess, we would use that first. I'm assuming we could. Um, okay. Yep. Well, we used some of that on the bridge. I don't know what that bridge cost. I thought it was like a couple hundred thousand dollars, but I may be wrong. I think it was like two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, that money is already being utilized in this capital 2023 budget. So previous, but like at the end of the year, if there's money left, then it just rolls back in there, and then we use mm -hmm. it again next year. It's, fine. Sure. it's kind of a, bar a borrowing pot type of thing. Well, I did see it looked like we, we have a lot of landfill money being used, and I was like, how do we get all this money? <laughs> it seemed, it, I, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like we have we have a lot of money. That's, that's uh, where it came no, from more the normal, prior, the more prior year, yes. Yeah. Yep. Consensus? Yes. No more. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay, moving on to the next one, page 40. So, again, this is five year planning. Hill and Dale Drive. Okay, so Hill and Dale Drive, it's a bad road. So, what we looked at was splitting it up um, from Field to Racine. West of Racine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's me. West of Racine. From Field to Racine, we really need to reconstruct that road. Now, how are we trying to do this? So, they passed a bipartisan infrastructure law, BIL. So we did an application to see whether or not we could get this application. Now again, it's supposed to be 100% would be design. They're saying 80% WSDOT, 20% municipality. It'd be going through their local program, kind of like how we did Moreland Road a couple years ago. Um, again, why we have to put this on there is we have to show that we are willing to do this. Again, our application is in, but we, we haven't heard back from anyone in the year that we'd start this would be 2024 would be for the design. Now, when you take federal money, you take things like, you have to do an environmental document, a historical document. This will have a trail on the north side of the road. It won't, we were not going to put a bike lane on the road, but we need to put a trail on there. Things that do hurt against us. Um, one, it's not as much traffic as you would like Moreland was because we get rated on certain things. The other thing that does hurt us, and I want to make sure, is when we didn't put a trail on the other portion of Hillendale to the school, if you have one to the school and you have this trail, it, it really adds up for a lot of points. There's, it's all based off of a point system. But 
I'm just gonna let you know this is our space of when we would do it. This is like we had to provide cost estimates. So these are pretty solid costs that we had to look at for the design. Okay. Is there, is there a trail on Racine there or no? We didn't go that far down. No, there. no, no. Okay. So it would be on the north side of the road. Yeah, I understand. So okay. the the, uh, the north side of the road is the quarry? No. Is that the no. One? No. No, no, we're talking we're talking Hill and Dale from Racine going down to Field. And then one with the reconstruction is that field, that intersection would probably get reconstructed. I think if everyone's driven, it's kind of unsafe. Yeah. So that's okay. why, and that portion would be reconstructed. And then from field all the way down the Janesville Road, we just do that as part of the road program instead of a full reconstruction. I think that's the best way to use the, the funds that we have. Again, this is not guaranteed. I could come back to you in a year and say, guess what, we didn't get this. And you might be like, yeah, we're not gonna do this. Or we're gonna figure out another thing. But this is one of the methods that we try to use our funding source for. Well, so based on that point system, what, what's the likelihood that we will get the money? Five, I don't know. Five, okay. ten percent. Really? What? I, we're, it's, it's a tough thing. We are also considered part of Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Committee. So when we do and get some of these and we go after, we're going after City of, Mo City of Milwaukee and us are comparable. Mm -hmm. So who has more traffic, who has worse roads, who has more things? So it's, it's a very tough sell for us. Um, it's not just us, Wind Lake is considered part of Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Committee. We're all fighting for the same dollars, so. So do we have an alternate road that we would do if we decide not to do this one? No, this is this is our best opportunity because it has the most traffic and it has like the worst situation. It hasn't been done in so many years. So you're getting more points for as, as many. No, I mean, not not on the program, on our own program. Do we have, do we, so if we decide that we don't want to spend 2.2, .2, we want to spend a million on a different road. Do we have a, a backup? Yeah. Well, I do have a backup on the next page. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that was a backup. Nope, or a that's a backup. Okay. If we wanted to to discuss it. Okay. So you go out for bid on it. That's my point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. This is all. This that's is a, all through the DOT process, guys. We have to follow the what DOT I mean, the alternate. You're going out for bid too. Well, I'll I'll talk to you about the alternate. Okay. Okay. So the next one that we do have, it's called Candlewood Subdivision. That's on page 41. So Candlewood Subdivision. We cannot go and use BIL funds. We will never win it. It's a subdivision. There's no traffic. There's nothing. However, if anyone's driven it, it was constructed with fly ash. And the problem is you need to really take out the entire base and the entire pavement. You would probably keep the curb and gutter. You keep all the storm sewer. And it's at a very expensive cost to do. You can't just do road program for this. And how old is that road? It's not that old. It's not that very old. It really isn't. And the reason I bring it up is that's the complaint I keep hearing is I see the newer areas keep getting new roads and the older areas haven't. And like I said, some of my roads are 25 years old and they were barely resurfaced back then. So that's, I just bring it up as a point. You, you can't resurface. This can't be part of the road program. It, it won't stop what's happening. But I'm just letting you know what I keep hearing, so. Yep. Again, we can push this out. It, 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 again, it gets better during the summertime, worse during the wintertime. But I, I have to make you aware that sooner or later we got to do something. So. Okay, we are now moving on to page 42, and we are now doing DPW stuff. Any other questions that you guys had on those last two? Again, it's future stuff. Okay. Again, this is our typical DPW schedule, pickup truck uh, replacement. In 2023, we are looking to do a half ton uh, pickup. Have you had any luck talking to the dealerships about the, with the pickup trucks doing a quick turn turnaround on those? I have not. Okay. One of the things I'm, we're gonna be looking at, so how often do, how long do we keep our trucks right now? Uh, our oldest, Our oldest right now that's still in service is a 99, just because of our maintenance program. So as we go through, we're in about a 10 to 15 year turnaround. So one of the things we're gonna look at, and I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but it seems to make some sense, especially on the, like the, just the regular 
patrol trucks would be to turn them almost every year because our state discount on what we, what we get, they're worth more in trade-in than we paid for them. Now, are these, these have to be like 150s or bigger? This just half tons, like a 150 yeah. or 1500, but, but depending on your brand. Are we using them because they're 150s or can we use a smaller, because there's a lot of newer hybrid, if you want to flip them every year, they have a lot that, less money. Yeah, everything that are, that, that are well, four doors with a bed in the back. But we're, we're not looking at the less money part of it as the value of the the residual value. And 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 I don't want to muddy the waters here and here because we're not sure we're going to do that for sure. But it's just I'm just letting you know it's something I'm going to. Well, be something I was going to bring up anyway. But that you know if the the most popular truck out there is a Ford F1, F150 or a 1500 GMC, the value on those just in the used market because they're so popular is so high and our state discount is so decent that literally it'd be like the Harley, you know, discount where you actually make money on selling them every year. So instead of holding them for 10 years and trying to maximize, it might make sense just to trade them in every year and trade them in for more than we're actually paying for the new one. And that is still my same point with a smaller truck. If we're just using it for field, yeah, but the, the I mean, smaller, you still got the, the four small, doors and a small and a smaller. The smaller bed. one doesn't have the demand for the resale value. Possibly, we, you can't we can even look order at that. But I think I think you'll be surprised order. on where the value is on the full because no one makes a, people that are making a living. Their the reason their their value is so high is because people can run a business off a pickup truck, and it's that half ton and larger where that value is there. And for our application for everything we do, I would say the smallest would be a half ton pickup with the standard cabin eight foot bed. I mean, we're not looking for the comfort or the amenities or anything, or even having a four door. So the, the the trucks you're buying are eight foot beds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That that makes a difference. That's what yeah. I was wondering. Do you yeah. need you need an eight foot bed? Correct. Okay. Just functionality. By the time we put a box in there and everything else, it's it's tight. Any questions on this? Consensus. Good. Yep. yep. Moving on to page 43, um, this is just our miscellaneous small equipment. Uh, we just do this every year. We just put it in there, um, just the capital for that. Hasn't changed since we started of, this two years ago. What type of equipment, just so they're... Uh, generators, a lot of our park buildings, like especially this year with the wind storms and stuff, we were chasing, bouncing back and forth. Um, power tools, just stuff within reason, everyday stuff. Have we been hitting the budget on twenty five thousand, or been over? We've been under. It's five thousand. It's five thousand a year. 5, 000, 5, 000? Yeah, we've been okay. Okay. Any more questions? Consensus. Yep. yep. Next one, page forty four. Um, this is our big piece of equipment this year. It's probably the biggest item that we're looking at. Um, this is our big excavator, uh, three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. How old is it? The one that we got now. Uh, current one we have is a 2013. It's got just under 6,000 hours on it. So we're about 600 hours a year. It's our everyday machines, rubber tire excavator, you always see like the ditch digging, um, tree clearing. As of right now, it, it's, it's another piece, and I've said this in the past, that is kind of getting to that point to where the, um, the bigger things will start to go. Stuff that is going to nickel and dime us. We have a great maintenance program, but um, it's just something that, as I see, along with a rubber tire backhoe and everything else that we have, it is like a, a 10 to 15 year purchase. Mm -hmm. And right now, everything in that wheelhouse is about a year and a year and a half out. So as we get closer, you know, it's a 23 purchase. Realistically, I may see it in 24. So that's another 600 to uh, 750 hours we'll be putting on the current one. Did we get any estimate? I mean, how did you come over 350,000? Um, I took what is out on the market, every size okay. machine, and added a bunch. So typically this is going to come in lower than that, but I'm going worst case scenario, just what we went through in the last two years with ordering equipment, and it's stuck. You know, the boom is stuck on a container overseas, and the rest of it's here, and we got to pay X amount to get it here. It's just the name of the game, unfortunately, right now. I don't see it being 350, but... We what, shot high. What would you be doing with the current one? Would you keep it or would you uh, be looking it's to? It's probably already sold. Okay. So this is without trade-in, but <clears throat> worst case scenario. 
we never put trade in values because we never know what it's going to get. Right. But you also saw too, remember I had to come back to you twice for our snow plow truck with a plow. It just kept going up, kept going up every three months. Um, that's what we're facing right now. There is companies that salesmen that seek us out because of our maintenance program, knowing that the piece that they're going to get traded in and they already have people looking at it. So we have that on our side. So you'll do a trade in on it, you think? Or do you sell it outright? It'll be a trade in, most likely. Depending. I mean if it's gonna if we're gonna get more, obviously we always have the other route, but sometimes easeability. Not a guarantee. Consensus. <coughs> yep. <coughs> Moving on, uh, page forty five, we're looking at a new leaf sucker machine. Um, this one's a little higher than we had in the past, but again, this is a one-man piece of equipment compared to a four-man piece of equipment. Um, again, we are not stopping our leaf pickup program anytime soon, um, so we're, we're, we kind of need these things to keep going with it. And we're adding subdivisions. <laughs> so this will be, right now we have somebody and people walk behind and suck it up, and, and so this one will have the thing in front and does it itself? The, well, it has the option for it. And when Scott and I put this in here, our, the last leaf machine we bought, I think, was in the $50,000 range. And that's where you see the guys swinging a tube and filling up the rakes. Um, we went around to a couple other municipalities to try and see if we could find something that I could just do the curb and gutter subdivisions with, not requiring as much manpower because it's hard just to find part-time part -time help right now. Um, as of right now, the ones that we currently have are flirting with about 70000 so I'm still waiting to get prices back, and it's all within the last month. So if possible, at the least, I do need to replace one of the ones that we ha we've had since uh, we started sucking up leaves in 2002, and we just keep sticking parts in it and parts in it, so at the least, we can still get the one we have now. So this will be like sucks off the side then? Yeah. yeah. So I, I've seen them where they have them where they come to the front and they can move them around and pick them up themselves. Yeah, it's not that elaborate. This will because work that's, with our... That's a lot more money. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> but then you have a lot less people. Yeah, I mean, that where is and that also works like in West Dallas, Milwaukee, where they have vertical curb. They can pin that against a vertical curb. We have a roll curb. So, I mean, even your best driver, it's going to, you're going to be, doubling back and backing up at that point, I don't think we'd be as efficient, okay. so. And these last two pieces of equipment were things that you projected last year, which, which we certainly appreciate. Right, yeah. yeah. And just to kind of let you know, the current ones that we have, we stick about $8,000, $10,000 in a year just in parts. I bet they Just to keep them going, so. Outside of fuel and salt, Picking up leaves so with the side one, you'll still need another truck there, or no? This is this will marry up to all the boxes we have on the trucks. Oh, okay. It's the same setup. We don't have to change anything, purchase any other equipment to go with it. It's kind of a if it works out and the price comes back great. If not, we can still upgrade the current equipment we have. Consensus. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moving on, page 46, um, again, we were bringing up Old Loomis Bridge. We got that done last year. Um, again, we need to do some guardrail. Um, the slopes kind of got constructed and were steeper than anticipated, so we need some guardrail for that Old Loomis Bridge. You guys do the guardrail work yourself, or you hire you hired it out? This would be hired out. I just look at guardrail and I see 75,000. Looks like we're going to have a half a freeway going down the side of the road. You know? No, it, there is, um, being that it is 35 on that road, there's different specs that they have to follow. So a little outside of our wheelhouse. But and that'd be all four sides, correct? Yeah. Yep. So remember, four sides of it. So mm -hmm. Consensus? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on, page 47, again, not for next year, but for 2024, we're looking, we're looking at doing the replacement of the old salt shed. That's about $300,000 that we're projecting. Um, I'm going to go kind of through these now, page 48. Um, 
our mini excavator, we were looking at in 2024, about $100,000 to do the replacement of that one. Um, page 49, our asphalt paver, we're looking to do that in 2026. That's about 85,000. Um, and on page 50, we're always kind of kicking this out a little bit, but if we ever have to add additional cold storage at DPW, we're estimating about 400,000 in 2026. However, the cost of building materials and everything, that number is probably gonna go up when you actually do it. Um, right now, it's just going up quite much. So so we bought a building not that long ago and, and it's not big enough for what we did? I mean, well, is, that, is that what you're projecting? Well, we're projecting as we add more subdivisions and we need more pieces of equipment and- So that building really, it's, it's not big enough then you don't, you don't really think it'll be big enough, huh? Yeah, I mean, the, when utilities went to Apollo, they're full up and now we're full up already. I mean, it, wow. we, were, we were tight as it was, stuff was sitting outside. Yeah, I mean, outside. it was small before. Yeah. It, it, right. So we got this big building. And even now, I mean, it's seasonal, it helps, obviously, in wintertime, but where we can store things. But it just says we're growing and purchasing equipment, and it's by that time, I, I think we'll need something. I mean, yeah, it's down the road. It's good you're projecting. What about the, the old Boxhorn building? Do we still have that one, or do we, do we? So that is another one. We have the old Boxhorn building. Uh, we've been kind of using it for the last couple of years. Um, you approved back two well, years ago to kind of look at it. So we have, um, and here's the things that two things that we found. One, the budget that we planned for is not even close. It won't. It just won't cover it due to how it's gone up. Two, we have found that it's logistically kind of foolish for us to keep driving back and forth. So. One of the things that actually Ryan and I did talk, we're not gonna do it. We, we're, we're not gonna spend the money on something and we would rather spend the money and save it for cold storage. So our game plan is we'd sell that building between 500 and 1,000 bucks. Someone would come, take it down, get rid of it. Uh, we would use DPW staff, get rid of the foundation, using our own operating budget, not any other costs, and then just throw it with grass, landscape it, and be done with it. it it's kind of a logistic nightmare going back and forth. And when we first did it, it was probably easy to do a little quick repair. It's not, it's not cost effective right now to do it. Um, did I get everything about that? That's pretty much. Yeah, the building. I mean, when we when we bid it, it was before everything happened, prices, inflation, everything else, and actually, the price that I got um, was the same size, just taller walls, fourteen foot or sixteen foot walls with a fourteen foot door, so we could store anything in there. We've cut that building in half already, just because of the price and. For us to chase all the way across town just to store equipment and then go back and forth with it, it, it doesn't make sense. Right okay. now I have a lot of seasonal stuff yeah. in the old PD. It's right here. Obviously that may not always be there as an option, so we're looking down the road that we can do something in-house, on-site that would benefit both departments. Yeah. I think you said you would sell that property? That's what you're No, thinking? not the property, the oh. building. The, the, oh, oh, the, the building's building. kind of worth something. Again, okay. you get five to hundred. I was saying, yeah, I was thinking. You go five hundred to a thousand bucks, but what you do, we can't sell the property. But five to a thousand dollars, someone comes in, takes down the building, and gets away. Right, Basically, right. you're you're you're, you're giving I'm up. I'm just their, wondering what's happening with yeah, the building. Yeah. Okay. So thanks. And that that's just all come up real recent, just to let you know. So. Well, that's why you know I figured that you put this in for 2026. I was just, yep. Just wondering why we're going down that road. So that answers it. Mm -hmm. Anything else, we're gonna switch over to water utility and I wanna make sure anyone else has any other questions related to DPW before I release Ryan. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Utilities on page 51. We're gonna start with water utility, page 51. Um, for 2023, we have no truck request. Um, and I think the, the reason why it will be coming, so just to let everyone know, we have a big uh, shop vac truck that we need, and that is gonna be a very costly price. So when we do have some of those, like we did the camera truck a couple of years ago, we just kind of waive our, our no truck request that year to kind of save, uh, save some money. Moving on, page 52, uh, SCADA security. Um, what this is, is basically at our, our wells and our lift stations, we are going to get a FOBS system 
that allows us to kind of like when a person is there, we use our FOB system to check in and check out. Um, it's kind of like another uh, level of security. Um, couple, last year, you guys gave us permission where we copied our SCADA system so that if, it, if we have any type of cyber attack, um, we're able to flip it over and no one touches it. This is just another way of us kind of getting in line with uh, security reason, protocols. And we broke it down for the next three years. And this is both, is this both water and sewer? Or, or just water, we, we kind of split them. Again, this is just water, because we have to split them up. This comes out of the water fund? Or is this coming out of the landfill? Working, Working capital, capital from water. Water. Water, that's what I thought, okay. Yeah. I didn't see anything. Yeah, if you look at okay. the bottom, it oh, says sorry, water yeah. working capital. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Consensus? Sure. Yep. Page 53. Uh, again, this is just our number of water meters needed. Um, again, we are projecting 200,000, 200,000 for the next five years. Um, this is our basic of new construction and the increase of water meters that we are replacing each year. Questions? Consensus? Yep. Yep. Our next one is page on 54. Construct a water uh, meter station that would allow accurate tracking of our water sold to contractors that currently connect at a hydrant near the city garage. So we have it. Um, we have contractors that come, but we don't have a really good system of tracking it. Is that the best way of putting it? Um, Pretty much right now in the honor system. <laughs> Okay. There's a meter there, and it's on there, and it's reporting what they've taken. This system will have a credit card type reader that they'll use. The only way they're going to get it. So, what's the return on investment projection? Sorry. I mean, 100000 seems like a lot to recoup. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe it isn't. It's going to involve a building uh, along with the filling system to keep. So we can use it year-round to keep it from freezing. Uh, right now, what we do is shut it down in the winter. Uh, there's trucks lined up there all day long. Yep. So, so. what's the <laughs> amount of water that we sell annually or whatever time frame you You know, I can't tell you, this, this, this last two years has really increased. Uh, it's, we're probably selling a couple hundred thousand gallons. Before this year, it really didn't make a diff make sense to do this because we'd, you know, we'd maybe sell a couple hundred dollars worth of water. Now, it's really increased. The hydro excavators out there are just all over the place. And the guys that are doing directional drilling, there's sometimes three or four trucks lined up to get water right now. You What's the cost on that, cost per gallon? Or? Our regular three fifty nine dollars 1000 I think, is what we're charging them, and a $30 permit. Okay. So you think there'll be less trucks once you start charging them? <laughs> I doubt it. There's very few communities in this area that, that are even letting them buy water right now. Oh. Oh. And do you currently shut down in the winter? We shut down in the winter because we're just filling off a hydrant. Will this be active all year round? It'll be active year round because it'll be in a heated building. So we sell more water. Yeah. Okay. All those pools in the winter can get filled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, the pool fillers, we very see very few of them because when our water has something in it, when you fill a pool, it gives it a blue tinge. Kind of looks like the gravel pits off Racine Avenue and the freeway. It gives, in a big volume, it gives it that green tinge awesome. and people don't like seeing that. <laughs> pH. Mm -hmm. So we, we have very few pool fill people. Consensus? Yeah. Okay, sure. Page 55, again, this is just our, our well rehabs. Um, in 2023, we're doing what? Well 13, iron filter and medium replacement. And that's all governed, you have to do this, right? Uh, well, yes and no. We have to do it because uh, the, the medium in, in that iron filter, well 13, is starting to be depleted. It's not regulated. Nobody from the DNR says we have to do it, but if we don't, they will. <laughs> Census? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Scott, I just want to make sure after we do 2024 and 2025, we've hit pretty much all our wells, um, I think, for the last five years, and then we should be good for a little bit. Right. Just to kind of let everyone know that we've, we've, we have been attacking this uh, pretty well. So. 
page 56, again, these are talking about water relays. Again, we keep kind of moving this down. Uh, sooner or later, though, that these aging water mains, um, they're going to at some point fail. Um, we're just providing costs and letting everyone know at some point when we would do these projects, please remember the road program would, would go right over the top of them. I mean, it would be foolish for us to do all this work and not do the road program right over the top. So, but we, we thought it'd be earlier, um, but in the last couple of years, a lot of them, they were going pretty hard for some water main breaks, but we haven't heard of many right now, it's, which is good. It's the old community water system that we've taken over in the 80s and early 90s and we had a bunch of breaks, thought we'd have to replace them, but they've kind of settled down the last couple of years, so. So we have nothing going on this current budget then? Correct, correct, correct. correct. I'm just kind of like letting you know, we we put it in there the last couple five years, but we keep kind of pushing it. These next few pages are just for, yeah. for things right, down yeah. the road. Right. Yep. Uh, page 57, we're talking about water tower painting again. Um, you know, we had a study done, was it last year? Uh, just telling us when we need to do them. So again, that's kind of just set up when we are doing them for 2024 and 2026, just to kind of let you guys know. Is it the water tower? Didn't we paint the water tower? Now? We painted that's one. A different one. one. This is, there's, we have three. Okay. So um, there's the one right by the DPW. Yeah. There's the one that's on Hill and Hill, which is kind of like, what kind of, we, it's not really a tower. We, it, it was, yeah, it's a it, standpipe. A standpipe. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I, I don't know if I've ever seen that one really, yeah, if it, I paid attention to it. Yeah, and it's more of, um, it's not your typical ones that you see, and then the other one is by the gingerbread house. Right, right. So. Okay. That's why I just want to make sure we weren't repainting the same one I didn't. Correct. That should last us a very long time. Um, page, where are we at here? 58. 58. Uh, we're looking at the Weatherwood Courts. Uh, again, we moved it up from last year to 2025. Um, this was re replacing some of the laterals. Again, why we're doing 2025 is, and we can't move it to 2024, is um, that's when we do our road program with curb and gutter. So after we would hit this one, we would hit it with our uh, road program as well. Page 59, uh, we're talking about Hill and Hill booster station. Again, we keep pushing that off. Um, there might have been some movement with the fact if we were looking at it, doing it with Fleet Farm, but again, nothing happened and we had a, they are doing a well, just to kind of let everyone know. So and the reason they're doing a well versus, we could have supplied the water uh, pressure that they would have needed to that area, so that's why we let, typically it's, we would force them to hook up and. Yeah, it's a pressure and volume thing volume. with them. We right. couldn't meet their fire flow needs. Yeah. But it's on the edge, right? It's all the way in the corner. Yeah. And that is all that we have for water utility. Thank you. We're moving on to sewer. Any questions about water utility before we go to sewer? Sewer is good. All right, page 60. So this is our jet vac truck. This is the one, $500,000 every 15 years. <coughs> it's only 15 years old? Yeah. Next year it'll be just 15 years. Okay, I thought we bought that before that. And same way a trade on that too, right? We, we will trade. Uh, we just got word last week that this number we have here might be about 10% out, outdated already. <laughs> but we should be able to cover that with the trade-in. I mean, we usually don't try to cover anything with the trade-in, but in this case, the, the, the price of these things are going up so fast that, uh, yeah, we will probably have to cover it with the trade-in value. Okay. Thank you. We, we've been testing, um, how many we tested? Three different types or two? Uh, yeah, we had three or four, four actually different demos. We've got to narrow down to two. They're about the same price and uh, these salesmen are <laughs> in the office every, every week. <coughs> so, you know, once we get through this process, we will pick one of the two and move forward. So we can order that before the end of the year, right? Uh, I'm thinking we're going to probably wait until after we final budget is approved. Right. But yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Consensus? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Moving on, page 61. Um, just as, this is just, uh, we're doing, um, I don't know the description's wrong, but it, it's just camera truck software. Um, we got that camera truck last year. Uh, we needed to do some updates in our software system. We used our existing software and moved it onto the new camera truck. And we found out about just as we were doing the budget, the software we have is <laughs> not compatible. It's compatible, but it's no longer being supported by the vendor. So we've got to get a new version of their software. Of IT. Census. Yep. Yeah. No choice. Page 62. Page 62 again. Uh, this is when we're doing, I think this is our SCADA security. Um, this is where we're doing our lift stations, kind of like our fobs for the waters. This is uh, for our wells and for the water towers. We're now doing all our lift stations too. Fob will be there. Just extra level of security that we're providing. Questions? Consensus? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Page 63. Uh, again, this is our lift station upgrades. Um, we kind of got our next plans for 2023 all the way through 2027. 2023, we're just replacing the VFDs at McShane Lift Station. What's a VFD? A variable frequency drive. It's the uh, electronics that runs the motors. Thank you. And we didn't have any, any major dilemmas during the last storm? No, actually for the five or plus inches of rain we had, uh, we came through it pretty well. Yeah, we, we were, we had things filled up pretty well, but uh, we kept it all in the pipe and we didn't back any basements up. So, or discharge. Or, yeah. Or discharge. Which is a big thing too. Oh yeah. Huge I think our one storage up. area, we, if some of you don't know, we have a storage area that does 1.7 million gallons. I think we had 1.3 in there. Between 1.3 oh, really? and 1.4 million. We still million had room, huh? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, crazy. It was it was a long night for our crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving along, uh, page sixty four. This is our private property I and I. Um, again, twenty twenty three, uh, nine hundred thousand dollars. Again, this is money that when we pay M M S D. Um, Alderman Kabaki makes a point of how much we pay them. They set aside a certain amount of money that we have to re reuse. Um, this year we have one of our work plans already started. Um, it's on the west side of Little Muskego Lake. This is then our next work plan. And then the following year, 2024 is $250,000. We continually get this um, from MSD and we'll be doing this program. So. Scott, this is part of the program that the green infrastructure that we opted out of, correct? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. This is a separate this program. Separate. They have not given any community the opt-out power yet. Okay. It would be nice to be able to opt out of this program and use the money as we see fit rather than as they see fit, <laughs> but they haven't given us that option yet. Yeah. Because you're, you're doing like the laterals or something, right? Correct. It's, it's basically... And some of them probably don't need to be done, but... They could be updated, put it that way. Yeah, and, and again, this is all on private property, I and I. And, and what we have found, and right now, just to let everyone know, in our first round, we have 88% participation, and that's really good. Now, how did we get that? We told everyone that we would cover everything, and it'd be us for free, like restoration. Um, if we take out a tree, we'll try to replace it with another tree. It won't be in the same location, won't be the same size. The only way that we found that success is by us covering everything, just to let everyone know. Other communities, they try to do it where they do a cost share and it just doesn't work. The other thing too is this is full lateral replacement. We have an inspector on site. We're replacing that entire lateral. We know what the new pipe is going in. We see it, we see the connection. Um, we like that better. Um, we, we, we know what it is. We know what's well, plus, going in there. Plus you wouldn't be able to spend the 900,000 that you're spending. Well, we can, there's but other options. They do pipelining, they do pipe bursting, but in our opinion is we rather know what we're putting in the ground. So. You, you can save a little bit of money with lining, less disruption to the yards, bigger failure. They've had a lot of failures with the ones they've done, other communities have done in the past. Uh, we don't want to put something in two years later, find out it fails. Consensus? Yep. yep. 
And the last one on page 65, uh, we need a new portable generator, um, 2023. Um, again, <laughs> generators, um, one besides this, when besides just our utility, we remember we're doing our emergency management plan. We, we now have enough generators to cover pretty much uh, everything. It's a good thing. Um, also too, when we do have power out, we take generators and we put them at various lift stations and wells, correct? We've got 28 lift stations. Some have standby generators on site. We utilize portable generators for the dozen or so that have no on-site power. So we we need one more. We've we've got a couple of them now. We could really use one more. They're all the, they're all the same size. If you're using portable, for the most part, they're between 50 and 100 kW, and they they'll run multiple stations. Any other questions on utility for Scott? Last item is just something down the line. <laughs> the last one and on page 66, it's just a, a study that we always have for stormwater by Kelsey Drive area. Um, again, it's something that uh, when I took this job, Wayne, uh, former DPW superintendent, said that we might need someday. Um, we're, we're handling things as development happens there, um, but in case we ever have to get a bigger development, we might have to do a study. So it's just kind of in there. We just push it along a little bit. Um, again, we're, it's more of like letting you know one day we might have to use it, but right now, as long as it's, it's not kind of like needed immediately, we just kind of move it one, one year back. We're now moving over to special revenue funds, which means parks, conservation. We, we're doing it in May, item. we're fine. You know what, before, let's start with page 69 while well, parks people kind of come up and help me as, as needed. Uh, purchase property for conservation. So that's page 69, the last page. Um, what, what it has brought up to us is there's a piece of property that potentially um, they could ask us or the DNR might be considering purchasing. It's, it's again located on the east side of Big Muskego Lake. We don't know for sure. I, I kind of gave you the best description possibly of that this scenario could go a multiple ways. But if I don't let you know and this pops up in 2023, you're all going to be like, why didn't you plan for it? So this is kind of like one of our, our, our ways just to kind of let you know real quick that this potentially could be something that the city has to cover. So the other source? What? I do not know. <laughs> now. We, we have the money in a plethora of other accounts where so we'd be piecing it together to do it. Um, big chunk of it may would it's matching funding with the DNR. So say we've come up with 100,000 and they come up with 400,000. So why would we want to buy it versus the DNR? I, I know in the past the we D had the DNR buy some property. They require cost sharing when they do it. So oh, okay. uh, we um, it stops development. Um, we get to keep it basically. It, it keeps the area. Um, this, this, this particular piece would be a good place to do it. It abuts to other things. So. Yeah, I, I think it's, yeah. I, I can't really say a whole lot about it besides when it comes up, we can talk about it then, but um, I, I think it's something good to the hear. cost sharing is what it comes down right. to. Got it. Okay. Yeah. There's so, large amounts of other DNR land yeah. adjacent. Right. That's And I know we they, they purchased some on their own yeah. in that area. That's why I was wondering, and I know we did some cost sharing on some of them too. This, so. this is one of those cases where people are, you know, they hear a new subdivision, they're complaining about it, and, you know, why are we doing all this development out here? Um, well, that's all driven by private enterprise. Well, this may be an option where the DNR is interested in it, the property owner is interested in selling it this way, and for it to be facilitated through the DNR, they ask us to cost share on it. And, and, and we've done this all around the big lake. Yeah, years. the big lake has been a lot of, a lot of yeah. like that, sure. Okay, we are now going to go to parks. Um, I think one is that of the 67? best. 67? The best actually is 68. Look at the spreadsheet. It, it kind of gives you a rough idea. And I think. But yes, 67 is the gross yep. number, the, the itemized breakdowns on 68. I think one of the things that I want to do before we just go into 2023 is to kind of give you kind of a five year plan and kind of talk about a couple things. Um, one, I think. 
everyone, we're, we're aware that we are doing our parks and open space plan. We're in the process of kind of doing it. Um, last year, uh, Tammy's group did a great job with the survey. We got really good participation. Um, we got a lot of things that that, they're a that residents are asking for, and it's allowing us to update our parks and open space plan. When we do our parks and open space plan, this generates how we want to do planning for the next five years in the parks and open space. So some of the big key kind of like ideas and, and cost sharing that I want to just kind of throw out before we get into the details. Well, one of them um, in 2023 you're going to see is a dog park. So um, we have a person who is going to do, a, who has come to the city and is going to provide a donation. Um, we have planned that we would be about $25,000 for this dog park. Dog parks have been probably consistently in top five requests. Um, we have found a location in Moreland Park. Um, we are working with the donor, um, but that is one of the things that will probably happen next year in 2023 that wasn't on there in the last five years that you saw. So that's by the skateboard area? It would be just south of the skateboard area. Yeah, there's a lot of open land over there, but it goes back into a development area too, so how, it, it'll be far enough away from residential? We Correct. believe so. At least we think so. Okay. So, and and just again, the only reason I bring it up is because I've I've heard you know we've had that open space at uh, Park Arthur that area over there too as well mm -hmm. that we we have no I don't see anything with Park Arthur improvements in that area for through 2027. Yeah. So again, kind of going through 2024. Um, a couple of big highlights. So we got two parks, 2024 and 25, Schmidt and Freedom. They both have a tennis court, pickleball court, basketball court. Um, again, both in surveys say don't remove those, even though we have a nice tennis facility at Kurth, but they both have aged pretty bad. And those are two big costs, 120000 each, just to kind of let you know. Um, we also have... Under 2024, um, idle aisle concrete boat ramps. Um, let me let me interrupt. So, a, yeah. a tennis court is also a pickle. We can do multiple. So you'll just line it. Yes, line we it can. Over. We're looking at whatever we try to do. We're trying to use court. Is that what you're looking? Multiple okay. uses. You know, okay. I know. I pick pickleball is becoming. A big it's word extremely. Here. It's extremely busy. Our courts are always busy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, we're trying to look for solutions to do multiple ones. So, but, but you're not looking to expand. So if you have an existing tennis court, you're just going to take that same spot and then make it a dual purpose. Correct. Okay. Correct. So I don't think we even have room there. Um, both places at freedom for sure. There's not much room that we have there, um, to do that, to expand. So these are just to replace what's there. So, um, the other kind of like things that I would like to show is back in 2024, again, idle aisle concrete boat ramps, they both need to be done. I am working with Ryan on a grant through the DNR. Um, I got a chapter 30 permit this year to kind of do the work. We are then putting plans together and then Ryan and I will probably have to go to Madison and present our case to get a grant. We'll see how it goes, um, but we're trying our best um, to do that. And that's why that's out in 2024. Um, the other thing in 2024, 2025, let's talk about trails. Um, we got a Martin Drive Trail. Um, that's the land and drive to Oak Hill Trail. Uh, we figure 2024, that'll be $83,500 cost for design. And about 2025, $751,000 for uh, construction. Again, that is not including purchasing of any right of way, just to let it, you know. Um, another trail um, that didn't make it on here, but I did get a cost, the We Energy Trail, that is about 6.7 miles. If you wanted to pave that, um, that would probably need about eight feet wide, five inches of asphalt, and with contingencies, that's just about a million bucks to do that. Again, that's just asphalt. Um, if there's any cost for excavation below surface, some of the other things, we, we didn't do that. It was, I just got a quick cost for asphalt. Um, that will that, be That particular next. one, if we were to do that, I would want to break it up over like four years. Yep. Do so many miles a year. 
And there's other options too we can talk about. They, they, you know, I don't know what I came to, I, I, I think it came to you first and it might have came oh, to me after that. Constantly. Then, then you gave me some answers. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think the big question on, on that email that went out is, is maintenance. And I don't really see maintenance on here for dollars. So is that just in our basic maintenance road it's program? For, yeah, it's in our operating. Okay. We, we do the best we can with what we have in operating. No, I understand that. I just wanted to bring that. Yep. I mean, again, we we would probably, you know, what we do is remember we we snow plow every trail. They're not our priority, and we have like I believe three weeks to get it done. But and we, I explain that to people all the time that, yeah. that it's really not our program. To, we do it as a convenience in the winter time, as an afterthought right. after we clear everything else out. Yep. But the the guys do a really good job. Usually oh, within do. a week we get job. it all done. So yeah. I was surprised to see it cleared as good as it is all the time. So. Yep. Um, again. 2024, you got Moreland Park, another pavilion with bathrooms. Again, that makes sense kind of with the dog park as our, our rentals have been used. I think we're over 100 rentals again this year um, for pavilions. Um, 2025, uh, again, I mentioned the, the trail for Martin. Um, Sand Hill Park, putting permanent bathrooms down there. Again, um, I think a lot of you have seen Mallard Reserve. Um, it's stone. Um, they should be getting curb and gutter and pavement within the next month. By November 1st, they're going to sell lots. There's 44 lots, I believe 20, and they're already spoken for. So that's going to happen pretty quick down there. Let, let me ask you, as long as we're talking bathrooms. Yep. So we'll just start with the stand hill. There's already infrastructure in place there for that? From my understanding, when they designed the pavilion, they they um, Dave Simpson, um, the former, okay, he, he had a plan to drop thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's a little cheaper because they did some planning for that. And then, there. of course, Moreland Park would be all brand new infrastructure. Correct, and it would be a, a bigger pavilion. And, and, and the that's pavilion's the, already there at Sand Hill Park. This would be a brand new one. There's no pavilion. And this is basically because of the dog park. No, we're getting more use. Um, you got probably soccer fields there. Um, it, it's a big park. It'd be a better one to probably rent out for places. Um, just some of the other things. You got a also a playground there. This is a full blown pavilion yep. going in. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna have like a concession out of it then, and things kind of like uh, I don't uh, not I don't Park Arthur type thing, only probably yep. a little smaller scale. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. Just a note back to the Martin Drive Trail. Yep. Um, I put a little asterisk there because. Mm -hmm. If you're going to start playing that next year, we should talk about that beforehand. You're looking at a million dollar trail there. <laughs> and I'd rather not see that flow forward without a, a great deal of discussion, even for the planning of that. And, and, and we're planning right now with higher oil prices, too. Hopefully things change. But you, yep. you never know. <laughs> I, I, remember I, I would agree with you. And um, it's not going to without more of a in-depth conversation and blessing from this council at that point, but we've got right. next year to do that, if we're gonna do that, so. I just remember in the past when we talked about a $250,000 trail and it ended up being 600,000. So we start talking a million, you're, you're right on it. You know, you never know where this is gonna go. Right. I mean, a million's a lot to start with. No, yeah. it, it, before we expand any of the trails or add trails, I think it's an, I mean, that we need to talk more on just that subject at the time and what we're gonna do. and. I mean, it's not a. We're not putting it in for next year, this year's budget. We're mm -hmm. talking down the line, and it's, it's like kind a of a placeholder, star, so we don't surprise star. you. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing too is, it doesn't really have my support. It's just <laughs> what was what was this is asked being of me by the by the uh, citizens are yeah. asking right. for it. So. And what, what was it, remember public works meeting was asked of me to provide a cost <laughs> and for to put it on here. So that's what I did. The other thing too. Guys, it would be on the north side of the road. If anyone drove it, it's really tight over there. And there's going to be some, you know, for every person who wants a trail, there's a person who doesn't want a trail. So um, I think we've seen that with all our tra trails here. You saw that on Hill and Dale. Yep. Well, except yeah. they all want it now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that we didn't do it. So I, I just want to share it. And then the last big one, just to kind of another one in 2026, um, Splash Pad. It's top five again for parks. Um, it's, it's been asked about it. Um, the other one, too, in 2027, West Park Arthur developed. So as we are going through this, we are getting issues of Idle Isles really busy. This is our first year of those baseball fields. Those baseball fields are beginning to get more and more and more use. We didn't even do fall leagues there just to kind of let the grass go, but we are going to start doing fall leagues. 
there's a plan. We got to sit down and we got to have a talk about it. It's to kind of give you an idea where I got that cost was. Back in the day, uh, there was a contractor who put a cost in for the plan that was submitted to the DNR. I kind of took that cost and I added inflation and I kind of multiplied it out all the way to 2027. So I, I'm, I'm giving you a fair warning um, again, but it's something where we have to at least talk, have that discussion as you know, we have more homes and more people moving in. Um, our parks are seeing an uptick and parking's going to be an issue with Idle Al and Park Arthur there, so. Now, just to, any questions before I just focus on the 2023, just to kind of long-term talk it, so. And please feel free to come and talk to us at any time. We can give you, a, you know, long-term planning, but I think this is a good little discussion to have to give you guys an all a, a big picture of the park system for the next five years, so. It is a big picture, $6 million. Yep. Correct. Veterans Park Playground projection last year was three and a quarter, four and a quarter this year. For veterans, yep. Wow. So, doing anything different? The equipment has gotten kind of a little bit more expensive. Um, now, I, I want to let you, that four and a quarter and how we are trying to share money. So, we have the Legion is doing a fundraiser. If you everyone talks about Legion, they're trying to raise twenty thousand dollars to actually do. Um, add some more like shading in some bench areas. If you went over to Lions Park, we added a little shading for the pickleball. They're raising, their goal is to raise $20,000 to help us. And that's not part of that cost, that'd be a separate item. The other thing too, is we're working to do our first community build for this park. That would save us a ton of money as well. Um, again, this is our main park. Every festival's here. I'm not gonna lie to you, $425,000 is really not that much for a park, if, for a playground set for this size. If, again, I have two little kids, I go everywhere. Uh, the one down at Summerfest grounds, I'm assuming is one, about one and a half million dollars. If it's, it's down there, it's a rubber flooring. Every community seems to be outdoing the next. And we're trying to keep it as cost effective as possible, but we would do a rubber um, flooring for this one, kind of like you have at Sand Hill Park. But we are, Hoping, like anyone who wants to do what Allie did for Manchester, we welcome. Um, Legion has stepped up. I think they raised a couple grand already. So we are working with them and their, their goal is 20,000 and provide extra um, shading. The footprint would be very similar to what the footprint you see out there. Um, you know, you have a larger, you have swing sets, you have a, uh, what, three to five or one to five age, kind of like playground and like a five to 12 age. Is that the so center? Is it the condition? Is that why we have to, we're redoing that or? It's our oldest one, I believe. <coughs> and then Schmidt would be the next one. So what, what do we do with the old equipment? It's, it's scrap. It's scrap? Yeah. The yep. liability is too, li too high for anyone. Once you move them, no one wants them because their insurance won't cover them. Once yeah, and then the safety again. Because that's a decent size set out there. Yeah. You know, it's just the only reason I bring it up. So if you look at for next year in 2023, guys, you know, um, Park Arthur Turf Care, that's $3,000, that's, that's maintenance. Um, is, just going back to the um, Vets Playground set, yeah. I mean, it, all, all fast, is there any, structurally is it wrong, is there anything going on it or is it becoming a maintenance issue yeah. or, okay. Mm -hmm. We did have to repair the slide, was it two years ago, I believe? We do yearly inspections with everything and it's getting to the point of where our, our bigger pieces are failing, the rubber coating's coming off of them and it's getting to the point of where it's either we can't fully pass inspection and we gotta stick a bunch of money into it. Okay. That's important. Then. And it's, it's probably our most know. used playground. Oh yeah, it probably is, yeah. yeah. Because if it was in good shape, I would say swap the and we did that with Kurth I, I do the water a couple years ago. If you guys, first. Yeah. But yeah, if you remember, we raised up Kurth, who was always wet. We used existing equipment, raised the whole thing up to save money. Yeah. But it's a little past that. But just kind of getting back, besides that one, if you look at wood chips, you know, our miscellaneous replacement equipment, all those costs are, are typical costs that we have every year. The only real big item for parks, the two, one, the Veterans Park Playground at 425 and the 25,000 for the dog park. 
but again, that's that was driven by a donation. Uh, someone's coming in. So twenty five thousand is is that just like putting a fence up? That, that's much? just our part. That's our part. Okay. It's I I don't know what again. We don't have a number yet from yeah. the oh, okay. from the a meeting with them on the twenty second. Um, I've had some preliminary meetings with them, but they actually want to show up and like give me react to our number that we're giving them for the whole thing. Um, you know, they, they very well might cover all of it. I don't know. So then they'll have to like buy a permit to use it or something. <laughs> is that what we're looking to do? Um, no. Um, you mean as far as the people using it? Um, generally, these are self um, self policed, meaning um, you have to pick up after yourself, and um, we cut the grass. But um, you know, and if they don't take care of it, you shut it down for two weeks, and then people start self policing other people, or if they see something, they pick it up because um, for some reason Ryan's guys don't want to go out there and pick up poop every day. Okay. So yeah. it'll be a fenced in area, just to let everyone know. Oh, yeah. It will be fenced in. So. Um, we don't know. Sometimes they use fence in areas. They do a, a large dog area and a small dog area. So, again, preliminary. But again, this is like he said, this is driven because we had a generous donor come forward. Yeah, I just saw 25,000. What do we, we just put a fence? Yeah, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't cover the fence. <laughs> <laughs> how big how big is that going to be? How many acres? No. It was. Um, <laughs> I have it in my office. Well, how about we do this? Once I meet with these people and find out where we're at, I'll send out drawings and everything to you guys. And we did a rendering. Yeah. yeah. There, there's there's a good size room. Yep. So, any other discussion on next year for parks or future? Consensus. Yeah. Sure. That is all I have. And that concludes the 2023 capital budget. Discussion of ARPA funds. Do you want to do that this meeting or do you want to roll that? The ARPA funds, there was a request to bring it forward. We can do, want to do it this one. We're already at 630, still with another meeting yet. But we can hold off on that for just bring it back. two weeks. Okay. Yeah. As long as we're on budget. Um, our, our Capital next, budget. Our, our next <laughs> budget process is going to be the operating budget. Correct. I'm sorry, I'm I, it's going to be the operating budget. Uh, I, I believe that all of us feel that our number one resource in this city is our staff. We don't manufacture. We don't sell a product. We sell services. It's been a difficult year for everyone because of economic cycles. Um, capital markets are down. Uh, consumer price index is up because of numerous things, rent and cost of homes and gasoline and whatnot. One of the biggest issues that all employers have right now is the retention of staff um, uh, and hiring new people. There just isn't a, a talent pool out there that is either willing to work or able to work or uh, wanting to work. With the, the operating budget, I'm going to look at this in a different manner than I've looked at budgets in the past. I want to see how this budget achieves certain goals, and those goals are staff retention, staff recognition, putting Muskego in a position where we're a desirable candidate for hiring people. We want the best and the brightest. We want to retain the best and the brightest. So as we look at this budget, ask the question, does this budget achieve those goals? If we look through the budget, and every budget's got fluff in it, um, let's look at the fluff. And if we can turn that fluff into something that retains employees or creates a, a, a better atmosphere for us, let's do that. So with that, as the, as the budget, and I think we're going we're to see the budget this week or next week, I'm assuming, two weeks, but we'll have it Council. in advance. So um, please study the budget and ask yourself those questions. How can that budget achieve the goals that we need to achieve for our most important asset? Thank That's you. Yeah. Any other communications or miscellaneous business? Motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Committee of Holes adjourned at 625.